So a few days ago, I logged into my YouTube channel and as I sometimes do, I had a look at the comments that had recently been posted onto any of my videos because sometimes I miss them um, and I want to make sure that if someone's asked me a question or said something, then I reply to them. And there were a few comments that I hadn't seen, including one on my driving vlog from six months ago saying that the video was shit, that I was shit, that I was selfish and I only talked about myself and I didn't talk enough about the mechanics of the car. Now, first of all, I think it is testament to how much I've grown that I didn't call this person a complete wanktard for their constructive criticism. However, it did make me think about the fact that even though I never posted that video as a tutorial, because I'd only just started driving, I didn't know much about my car. It was just basically letting you know my journey to getting the car and what I knew about the car so far and how I was finding it learning to drive. There, there's stuff I now know about the car and driving that I didn't know back then and I thought I would make an updated driving vlog. So I'll tell you about kind of what it's been like learning to drive an adapted car in the past six months. So I have taken that person's constructive criticism and turned it into something positive. So I am going to skip to Charlotte in the car now and she's going to tell you all about learning to drive. So this is my car as you might remember. I am sat outside my house because it is one degree and I'm just waiting for my car to defrost a little bit. We've got an electrician working there and I think he thinks I'm mad because I'm talking to my phone. Back to the video. I know you can't really see my head. I'm having to stoop down because I'm tall. So, Wanker412, you wanted to know the mechanics of the car. I don't know. I'm not a fucking mechanic. I'm going to start with telling you what it is like driving the car because apparently I wasn't descriptive enough. On the right here, we have the accelerator and brake. To accelerate, you pull it and to brake, you push it away. You can't be kind of soft-handed, you have to properly yank it down, but you kind of get used to it. And on the top of that is uh, the indicator switch. Uh, there is also an indicator switch on the remote control on the steering wheel, but I tend to use the one on the accelerator and brake. It's just easy to use because if you do it up there, then you have to make sure you get the right button, whereas there you can just have your thumb on it all the time, because your hand has to be on the accelerator and brake all the time, pretty much. The hand control. Now, I've had some problems with this, which I got sorted out the week before Christmas. Oh, he's there, the, the electrician is there. He's gonna see me talking to myself. Okay. <laughs> the hand control is done by infrared. I didn't know that. I don't know what I thought it was. And what I thought that little red button was, that is the infrared. That used to be on the side of the steering wheel, but I found that I was having, he's watching me, but I found that I was having troubles because the hand controls kept cutting out. So I thought maybe it was the battery or something. I took it in and they said that because it was on the other side of the steering wheel, my hand was sometimes blocking it and the infrared couldn't get through. Apparently that, that's what it was. I'm still having a little bit of trouble because the, the horn has never worked. The main beam, obviously the main beam, you have to be able to click it on and off really quickly. I can't get my hand down to the normal uh, light controls. And the main beam is up here. It's the top button and it, there's like a tiny delay so you can't kind of just click it on and off really quickly or you can't hold it down and flick it off as you would with a normal light switch that's a little bit tricky but um i'll get more into that in a minute because that is obviously you only use that when you're driving at night that's something else i'm going to talk about obviously i got it in the summer um in june and i it kind of only really gets dark at about sort of 10 o'clock like proper proper dark and I wasn't really driving at that time, so I didn't really know what... An oh, he looks like a little mole. He's got a light on his head. He's so cute. Our electrician is so sweet. So I hadn't really driven at night until about late September. Holy shit. It was terrifying. It was like learning to drive this again. It was just a completely new experience. I felt so out of control. I didn't like it at all, and I thought, I'm never, ever, ever going to get used to this. You do get used to it. And the first few times, I was panicking and just horrible partly also because it was raining the first few times I had to drive at night so I didn't just have the night to deal with I had really heavy rain to deal with um, and again that's that's something that's really hard and it took about four or five times driving in those conditions to feel comfortable driving at night and to feel comfortable driving in the rain like that there's a really horrible road just before I get to Sam's that is just 
a shitter. It's really windy and people drive really fast. And I had to obviously drive that road at night in the rain and it, it wasn't pleasant. But you know, I've gotten used to it now. The first few times I had to stop like two or three times along the way because I was so scared and just panicking. Again, that was partly because of the rain. Oh, I had a bump as well and it wasn't my fault. I was at a roundabout and somebody drove into the back of me and then Sam was with me. The guy couldn't get out of his car. Sam got out and was like, you need to get out. You've just driven into driven into our car. And he was like, so? He wouldn't apologize. He wouldn't, he was just like proper rude. And so obviously Sam was dealing with him and he didn't come and talk to me as the driver. He wouldn't come and talk to me. So I shouted out the window, you've just driven into me. I can't get out and talk to you because I can't walk. So can you come talk? And he was, and he, he pointed to Sam and he was like, I'm dealing with him. And I was like, wow, what a wanker. Luckily, there was no damage to the car. I would have been devastated if there had been because that would have been shit. The other thing to tell you about is petrol. This car is shit on petrol. And I don't know whether it's the make. It's a Nissan Juke. I don't know whether it's because of the car, because of the journeys that I do, or because of the fact that I have the hoist in the back, which is obviously very heavy. Um, and that makes it badder on petrol. But I know my mum's car, when I drove that, that was a Polo. And that used to do... 350 mile 350 380 miles a tank this one does 230 to 260 which is shit um so i'm having to fill it up like every week and it's it's expensive you know it costs about 35 pounds to fill up the tank and so yeah it's it is expensive i'm trying to limit the journeys that i do at the moment because i'm broke it's part and parcel of having a car i guess having to pay for petrol so i'm gonna drive now and stop and talk to you in a little bit um so i can check my list to see if there's anything i've missed so one of the other things i was gonna say as i've just said it is one degree now so it's like just above freezing um the roads are very icy that's something else i've had to contend with icy roads we'll say luckily we haven't had too much but i would have liked it if we did I haven't driven in snow yet. I've driven it in like frosty conditions at Sam's um, because the roads are flat and it's kind of near main roads. It doesn't really get icy like I know it here because at my house we live on an estate that is hilly and like around my road it gets very, very, very icy. So coming home sometimes it's icier than when I've been at Sam's and it's really slippy. At Sam's it tends to be okay and I've not really driven on proper shit conditions yet. I've driven in really harsh fog and as I said I've driven in really bad rain but I've not driven in snow. I've not driven on like proper sheet ice I'm glad about because you know that, that I don't like. As I said there's black ice around my house so there's I've driven on that. It's kind of a bit like going on a roller coaster because you never know which way the car's going to turn. But I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to tell you about the car. Because obviously I don't want to get people telling me that my video is shit again. <coughs> Motorway driving, that's something else that I'm doing. And that's something that I'm doing today as well. But I was literally just about to drive to Sam's. I've just realised I've started on the wrong way. That's really silly of me. I'm going the opposite way. I'm going to see my therapist in Stratford-upon-Avon. So I need to go on the M40, which is obviously a motorway. I've done a little bit of motorway driving. I've driven to my therapist a few times. And also my nieces live in Warwick, which is near Stratford. Um, so that is the motorway as well. Um, I've also driven on the motorway from Leighton Buzzard, where Sam lives, to Northampton. That was... Is that the M1? It's either the M1 or the M40. Again, that's a whole do different type of driving. Luckily, I'm quite used to driving on motorways. I grew up with my mum being terrified of motorways and she only drove on them for the first time when she had to, when we were proper stuck somewhere. When I was in like my late teens, so I grew up with my dad being very comfortable with motorway driving, but my mum being terrified. And I knew that when I started driving, I didn't want to be terrified. So I started straight away. I went on a few motorways, not unnecessarily, just I didn't avoid them. When I was making my album a few years ago, I had to drive all over the country. I had to drive to Liverpool, which is like four hours on the motorway. And I've driven to Bournemouth as well once. Um, that was like when I was 18, 19. But yeah, I've done a lot of motorway driving. And this time around, like with the new car, I've done a little bit as well i didn't want to be scared i probably find motorway driving easier than than smaller driving because you can stay at a steady pace with this car the one thing and i think i said this in my driving in my first driving vlog you have to be well on the ball with concentrating with foot driving you can kind of not drift away a little bit but you can kind of coast 
uh, you don't have to concentrate. Whereas with this, because you are constantly having to hold the hand control either to accelerate, you're having to hold it at a very awkward position. You're like holding it like that or you're braking. Um, there's no real, you know, your foot, when you're driving with your feet, your feet naturally kind of rest at an accelerating pace. Whereas this, you're holding your arms. It's a killer on the arms. So that's something else I can talk to you about. Parking during harsh turns. I really struggle because you have to do it lots of times. Obviously, you're having to go quite hard around. So doing really harsh turns is really difficult. I was okay with it until I had my first round of Botox and I had really bad neck pain as a side effect. And so looking over my shoulder and doing really harsh turns is, is really painful. Um, I've got to admit, sometimes if I'm with Sam, then he helps me out like on the little road. He'll just like do the harsh turning. For the most part, it's, it's okay. I don't do a lot of that sort of thing. It's just if I'm turning around or if I'm parking or trying to get out of the space. That's something else I can tell you about parking. I've not really done much, what is it, parallel parking. And I've not done a multi-story yet. I was terrified at the thought of doing a multi-story with the hand controls. I don't know why it feels like the car is bigger. And also because this car is a lot bigger than anything I've driven before. So when I first started driving, I was like, I'm never driving in a multi-story, that just scares me too much. Now, I, I do it fine. Um, I've obviously got that experience now and I feel okay with doing it. I've not done it yet because I've not had the need to, but I don't feel afraid of doing it. So I kind of feel more confident in my abilities and my ability is not to crash in a car. That's probably why I, I'm scared a little bit because I've had quite a few bangs in multi-stories. Um, a lot of them not my fault, but a few of them kind of my fault. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit wary. What else can I tell you about? See, I left my house so the electrician watch wasn't watching me and now there is a car driving past watching me. I've driven passengers. I normally have Sam in the car. I've had Lola, his daughter, in the car a lot and I also drove with Sam in the front seat, Lola, her mum and her brother in the back seat, so I had a full car. And I don't think I've ever driven with a full car before, like even when I was driving with, with my feet, because it's very disconcerting. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I need to say to you. I am gonna head off to my appointment now. I'm a little bit early because I've got some stuff to do. I hope that I'm covering everything that I need to cover. As I say in all my videos, if you have any questions, please ask me. If I if I can answer it, I will. Don't be a dickhead and go, oh, this video is shit. You didn't say this, you didn't say that. If you have a question, just ask me. I try my best. I don't know what I'm supposed to be saying. The vlogs that I make on this channel, all my videos are about my own personal experiences and are what I feel I want to say and have to say. Sometimes I miss things out, sometimes with editing I cut them out because I'm not happy with the way I look or I'm not happy with what I say. That might sound shallow, it's not shallow, it's a mental illness. So I'm going to start driving now so that I'm not late for my appointment and I will see you probably when I'm in a car park. One of the best things about driving with hand controls is the fact that I can drive cross-legged. It's not always practical but when it is, it's amazing because you can literally drive like all comfortable. I tend to drive with one leg down, one leg up because I need to protect my joints, I need to protect my feet um, and make sure they're comfortable and sitting in a position for too long can be can be painful. But there's something else that I was going to talk about. I'm going to talk about my uh, the strength, the the strain on my arms that it takes driving and my hips and my legs it's it can be it can be quite tough after about sort of 10 15 minutes in the car i start to feel a lot of pain with my arms and my legs my legs and my feet because they hurt anyway and my arms because it's really tough driving with your arms if i'm driving straight then i can be okay it's also tiring after about 45 minutes i i need to rest like from my house to sam's it's like 45 minutes to an hour depending on the traffic and that's pretty much the only journey that I do. Um, and then from my house to my therapist, it's about 45 minutes to an hour as well. So all the journeys that I do are pretty much that. I try not to do two of those journeys in one day, but sometimes like today, I have no choice. Like I'm driving there and back from my therapist. Sometimes I drive there and back to Sam's in one day. I think the most I've done is like from Sam's to my therapist and then back in I literally have to drive past my house 45 minutes from Leighton Buzzard to Brackley and then from Brackley to Stratford is about 45 minutes so that's an hour and a half you allow about an extra 10-15 minutes for like traffic and stuff and then you have to do that twice and I've had to do that twice before and that's fucking rough so it's like about three hours at least of driving in a day obviously it's broken up but 
I struggled with that the first time I did it I really struggled with that I've just imported and edited all the footage that you just see I didn't end my video so I'm sorry about that I don't know why I didn't I'm normally very good with that and put it down to being stressed and having to drive and all of that and I just forgot there are a few things that I wanted to just update you on because that was a few days ago I said in the video that I've not driven on snow before and as it stands today it started snowing it's not settling but i think it might snow again the next few days and if it does it'll probably settle because it's very cold however my car is broken that's the other thing i was going to say to you i mentioned to you that my infrared had had some problems uh, with the hand control and uh, yesterday when i was driving home it completely cut out and i couldn't turn the windscreen wipers off and none of the other buttons would work so I tested them as well. I'm gutted because like it's my baby but there's some people coming over in about 10 minutes to have a look at it to try and fix it so hopefully it'll get fixed. I will update you on that. And uh, the other thing that I was going to talk to you about quickly that I forgot to mention actually it's a new thing. I mentioned that um, driving is very painful on my wrists and my hips and my feet. For about four days I've had a really bad pain along here um, on my wrist and in my hand and now my fingers. And I told mum that I described the pain and she said it sounds like carpal tunnel syndrome um, and after reading about it I suspect it possibly could be. I have dodgy nerves anyway so um, I'm going to the doctor next week to maybe see if there's anything I can do. It's been hurting on and off for a few months but it's hurting like really really badly. The skin hurts up here, it's really bizarre, it feels like there's, uh, I've got a blister or something. But because this hand is always accelerating or braking, it takes a lot of a battering, so. That's the end of the video. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments or ideas for the videos, please just comment down below and I will get back to you. Don't just say the video is shit. I've said that again. Don't just say the video is shit. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you again soon. Bye.